Good day! Welcome to another episode of The Fed Titas. I am Dr. Christine Cusi, a developmental pediatrician from Cebu City. And kasama ko po as always, yung akin partner po si Dr. Victoria Ang Nalasco, a developmental pediatrician from Manila. And ngayong hapon po, for our special December episode, meron po kaming isang DevPed Tito! <laughs> <laughs> Ang ating DevPed dito po ngayon ay si Dr. Mark Gracio Cruz. Isa din po siyang developmental pediatrician practicing in Quezon City. He is the head of the Child Development Unit at the Capital Medical Center. He is also involved in their church as an elder. And nagtuho din po siya sa Sunday school doon po sa church nila. Nais lang po namin kayong batiin ng isang Merry Christmas. Malamang madami po sa atin ngayon, iniisip natin na baka maraming kulang sa Paskong ito kasi wala na yung mga Christmas party. Paano na yung mga dating ginagawa natin tuwing Pasko? Yung mga bata pupunta sa mall, titingin ng Santa Claus. Hindi po ibig sabihin na mamimiss out ng ating mga anak ang spirit of Christmas. Dahil ang spirit of Christmas ay tungkol sa ating faith. And it's also about being with our family na makasama natin ang ating mga pamilya, makikipag-connect sa ating mga loved ones at sa ating mga anak. Mahalaga po sa atin na turuan natin ang ating anak tungkol sa ating mga pananampalataya. Hindi po ito tungkol sa relihiyon pero tungkol po sa ating relasyon. Kung naniniwala tayo na meron tayong isang creator, tungkol po sa relasyon natin sa kanya. Sa totoo lang, kaming tatlo po, magkaiba po yung relihiyon namin. Ako, tapos si Kusi at si Doc Mark. Pero lahat po kami ay merong isang pananampalataya na naniniwala kami na mahalaga po ang paniniwala sa Diyos sa development po ng isang bata. So Doc Mark, Doc Kusi, ano po ang importance ng pananampalataya sa development ng isang bata? Uh, from a Christian perspective po, sabi sa Bible, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Yung hope po dyan, hindi po yung word na hope na parang hindi tayo sigurado, yung uncertain. No? Kunyari, sabi ng bata, sana matanggap ko yung hiningi ko kay daddy sa Pasko. Hindi pa siya po sigurado di ba, na matatanggap niya yun. Yung hope na sinasabi dito is very definite. Alam niya na mangyayari yung bagay na yun. Ang faith po na sinasabi dito is yung knowledge po na ina-apply sa buhay tsaka yung character building. So actually, pangkalahatan siya. So definitely po, maganda po ang pananampalataya in developing resilience more so during these uh, difficult and challenging times na may pandemic time. Ang ganda na po nang sinabi ni Doc Mark. And you know, even science backs this up. There are a lot of evidence-based studies na nagpapakita po na ang faith really is a big factor in building resilience or the ability na nakaka-recover po yung isang tao sa isang paghihirap na pinagdaanan niya. I also did a literature search on that. Yun pong mga studies na pinapakita talaga na pag ang spirituality daw po, malaki po ang connection sa mental health, na pag mataas po ang spirituality, mas maganda po ang kanilang condition in terms of mental health. Hindi sila masyadong nadidepress, nagiging anxious. Yung mga bata na pinalaki, na naniniwala sa Diyos, may less chance ng mga mental health problems. May less chance ng substance abuse yung mga na-addict sa droga, na-addict sa alcohol by the time na adolescent na sila. Kung nais po ninyo na malaman itong mga research na ito, punta po kayo sa aming website sa devpedtitas.com. So, Doc Mark, ilang taon po ba sila pwedeng simulan na turuan about faith? Hindi po yung guarantee. Pag yung bata po, eh, we start them early, eh, they will stay keeping at it pagtandaan nila. But siguro po yung chance, ah, mas mataas. Ano? So, when we start them early po with praying together with them, going to church together as a family, of course, walking the talk kasi minsan iba din yung sinasabi natin, iba din yung nakikita nila. All of that probably will up the chances that what we are teaching them now maybe have knowledge, maybe kasi no choice sila. Sa paglaki nila, they will build their own convictions and see for themselves na it's actually a hard thing already. No? Yung talagang na internalize it. So initially sa, sa utak lang nila, but as they get older, na naintindihan po nila bakit, anong purpose nun, and because of their love for God, 
eh, tinuloy po nila yung mga practices early on. Kasi uh, the earlier kasi talaga, the better diba, in most things. Totoo po yun. Yung iba kasi nag-aalala sila na pag maaga pa lang turuan yung bata. Brainwashing daw ito. Pero hindi po ito brainwashing kasi naniniwala po tayo eh. Kung meron tayong paniniwala tungkol sa ibang mga bagay, halimbawa sinasabi natin na ito yung tamang pag-uugali, ito yung dapat na gawin nila para sa tamang nutrisyon, para maging malusog. Di ba mula pagkabata pa lang, itinuturo na natin ito sa ating mga anak. Itong napakahalaga para sa spiritual health, dapat pamahagi rin natin sa ating mga anak. Tapos, nagbabasa tayo ng mga kwento sa kanila, di ba? Halimbawa, mga Peter Pan, Cinderella, Snow White. So, alam nila yung mga kwento na ito. So, kung mahalaga sa atin yung mga kwento ng ating pananampalataya, dapat i-share din po natin to sa ating mga anak. Ano po yung mga ways na age-appropriate ways na i-share natin ang pananampalataya sa ating mga anak? So, let's say sa toddler stage, sa preschool, So, ano po yung mga tips na uh, pwede natin i-share para sa ating mga viewers? Ito ay po, that we can teach them po. Siyempre, inaayon po natin sa development ng bata. Hindi po natin pwede i-approach ang infant katulad po ng 10-year-old kasi hindi po nila maiintindihan. Kahit baby pa po, maliit pa po, pwede na po tayong magsimula. So, what are tips po for babies and toddlers? So, pwede nyo na po silang basahan ng mga children's stories from the holy books ng pananampalataya natin. You can also sing yung mga songs ng pagpupuri sa Diyos. Then you can also start talking to them about God or kung sino po yung supreme being that you believe in. Tapos po, for what about po for elementary or school age children? So you can continue po yung mga sinabi ko sa inyo. Kasi nagbabasa na po sila at this age, you can encourage them to read um, children's Bibles or kung ano nga po yung inyong mga holy books. Meron po yan usually children's versions na appealing to young children. Or kung hirap pa po sila magbasa, you can also spend time reading it to them. It's also an opportunity when you read to the child, you can also ask questions. It's your chance to teach them lessons. And you know, sabi din po nila, it's also good to ask questions to your children about life, about how they perceive things, kasi dun yung po sila nakikilala. And you can also use these as opportunities po na maturuan sila. Favorite po ng mga bata ang arts and crafts. Nako, love na love po nila yan. You know, it can be just be a simple heart, magpo-color ka ng heart, and then you can say, Uy, mahal na mahal ka ng Diyos. O pwede ganun lang ka-simple for the younger children. Hindi nyo na po kailang habaan ng sobrang haba kasi maikli po mga attention span nila. You can even start to teach them to memorize verses sa Bible or sa holy book nyo. We start with very short verses, maybe two or three words, and then explain to them what it means. You can also read parenting books that are based on your faith. Yun nga, you have to be a model to your children. You have to walk the talk. Kasi children are very observant. Tinitignan po nila na kung sinabi ni mami na huwag mo tong gawin, pero ay, bakit ginagawa ni mami? Tapos, paano po sa mga middle school children or the older ones? In a lot of churches, meron na po yan mga camps, like children's camps, or minsan po pag summer, meron yung mga summer camps. Like example, every day may class po sila. They can already also serve um, in church. Like pwede silang maging assistant teacher. Or yung iba, pwede na silang tumulong sa music ministry. Or minsan sa pag-arrange lang ng mga chairs, paglilinis. So that's a way that you can also teach na it's their way to serve God and to serve others. Paganda nga yan, Kusi, kasi it builds not only their faith, but also their social skills and their self-esteem. Tama po yan, Dr. Toyang. Na, you know, ang dami pong nade-develop dito. For the high schoolers naman po, you can continue continue all those things and then you can also discuss with them careers. Kung baka gusto nilang mag-serve sa church in the future. And you know, for parents, I think the cornerstone for teaching your children about faith is really having that good relationship with them. Now you have to be available for them, you listen to them, be their friend. Um, hindi po, um, kailangan po quality and quantity time with your children. Hindi po big moments yung hinahanap natin with the children, but you know, those small mundane moments, yung maliliit na bagay, use all of those as teaching opportunities for them. You don't have to preach all the time. You can just lead 
by example. So, yun po yung pinaka-important po, that relationship. Tama. Uh, tingnan din natin kung ano ang kanilang level of development. Halimbawa, for early childhood, yung tinatawag na pre-operational stage, iba yung pagka-explain natin compared to isang school-age child na tinatawag nasa concrete operational stage. Ayon kay Jean Piaget na isang psychologist, during the concrete operational stage, kailangan yung something na nakikita nila, something na konkreto. So, how do we do this? In everyday actions, through stories, through prayers. And then, by the time na umabot na sila sa adolescence, papasok na sila sa tinatawag na formal operational stage. So, andito, mas kaya na nilang hawakan yung mga mas abstract na konsepto, yung mga philosophical questions. So, sa edad na ito, magsa-start na sila na magtanong. And we have to have answers for them. Sa edad na to, Siguro yung sagot na dati, pag mas bata sila, masasatisfy sila na ay o oh, kasi ganyan or kasi sinabi ko. Pero by this age, mas na-explain na talaga natin. So I guess the best way is we really have to strengthen our own faith also. So that when these questions come up, we will be better able to answer them. My experience right now, even with my two adult sons, and then the third one is a young teenager, what we've been doing now is one chapter of the audio Bible of the Book of Luke. So over meal time by Christmas Eve, na natapos na namin yung Book of Luke. So any age pwede actually. And really, kasi as they get older, konti na lang time namin they want to spend with us. Kaya we take advantage of the basically meal times kami na ko kompleto. Ang isa pang gusto nga namin emphasize that it's really very important na kung ano yung mga paniniwala natin, kung ano yung mga values natin, ituro natin sa mga bata. Kasi minsan, natatakot tayo na i-impose ang ating belief and values sa ating mga anak. Parang gusto natin na ay kailangan meron silang freedom. At totoo, nabibigyan natin ng freedom, pero ang freedom ay dapat something that is appropriate. And we also have to set our own limits to them. And kailangan ituro natin sa ating anak na there is such a thing as right and wrong. Kasi minsan, ang nagiging mensahe na, lalo na pag pumunta sila sa social media, ano na ang sinasabi ng mga tao? Na there is no such thing as right and wrong. But we believe that to be able to live good life, a healthy life, and to be able to grow up the right way, kailangan ng guidance at ng direksyon ng magulang. Bilang magulang, hindi natin trabaho ang maging kaibigan nila or na lagi silang pasayahin. Pero ang trabaho natin ay i-guide sila sa tamang paraan. Agree, Dr. Hoyang. Tayo ang main teachers ng mga kids natin. And if we lose by default, definitely they will get their learnings from social media, which is what we don't want. And possibly other influences na hindi naman godly. Kung merong tao na tuturo sa anak natin, saan ba natin siya gusto matuto? Gusto ba natin na matuto siya sa mga tao, sa Facebook, o kung saan-saan na hindi natin kilala at hindi natin alam kung ano ang sinasabi nila? Or gusto ba natin na sa atin sila matututo? At syempre, mas gusto natin na kung ano ang pananampalatay natin, kung ano ang paniniwala natin, yun ang matututunan nila. Hindi natin ito maaasa na yung school lang yung magtuturo nito. Kailangan, pati sa bahay, nakikita nila na naandun rin ang Diyos. Kailangan po talaga that parents teach their children kasi if you don't teach them, someone else will. And you don't know what kind of influence po they will be to your children. And nakakatakot na po ngayon na meron na po silang access sa World Wide Web. And hindi po natin alam kung ano pong pwede nilang mapulot doon. Unlimited po yung resources na available. That's why you're there to guide them. Kailangan habang bata pa lang, strong na ang kanilang foundation. Narinig niyo na siguro yung someone saying, ano ba yung Pasko kung walang regalo, ano? Eh kasi di ba nowadays po, those of income, employment, di ba? Sickness, death. We might not be able to provide as we did the previous Christmases. Tuloy pa ba daw ang Pasko, no? So that is why po, we go back. Ano po ba yung reason for Christmas, hindi ba? I'm coming from a Christian perspective po, no? Na this Christmas po is really the birth of Jesus uh, who came to save us from our sins. So whether may pandemic o wala, uh, talaga pong tuloy ang Pasko, no? But maybe there are family traditions that have value for family bonding and uh, reminding us of what Christmas is all about. Ituloy po natin yun just to remind us why we are celebrating. So Merry Christmas! <laughs> for me, my short exhortation of hope 
you know, hope is found not in other people, not in our circumstances, but hope is found in the person. Hope also sets the direction of our lives. So kung saan niyo po nilalagay yung hope niyo, yung pananampalatay niyo, yung pag-asa niyo, it will set the direction of your life. So, Merry Christmas! Oh, thank you so much, Doc Mark and Doc Pusi, for your very hopeful message. Totoo nga po yun. Lahat po tayo, madaming dinaanan tong taon na ito. We pray for strength for you and for your family. We pray for hope for this Christmas season. Well, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. I will see you again in February for more videos about child development. Thank you! Thank you!